Close your eyes. Take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths and watch the breath as it comes in, watch the breath as it goes out. Let the mind, st mind stay right here. Each time it comes in, know it's coming in. Notice where you feel it coming in. Each time it goes out, notice where you feel it going out. Notice whether it's comfortable or not. If it's not comfortable, you can change. You can make it shorter or longer, faster, slower, deeper or more shallow, heavier, lighter. Find what rhythm of breathing feels best for you right now. Because the mind needs a place where it can settle down and really stay, because it spends so much of its time wandering around. It's like wandering around on top of a frying pan. You settle down here and you immediately jump up and run over someplace else. You settle here for a bit and you jump off someplace else and get out of the frying pan. Get to a place where you can rest and give the mind a chance to gather its strength. Because so as we go through life, there's so many things we know we should do. And sometimes we don't know. We don't have enough strength to figure out what's the right and what's the wrong thing to do. Or if we can figure it out, we don't have the strength to do the right thing. So the mind needs strength, and the only way it can get its strength is by being still. This is not like the body. The body gains its strength by moving around and exercising. But the mind strength comes from getting it still. What you're exercising here is your mindfulness and your alertness. They have to do the work. But you have to do the work in keeping the mind as still as possible. Because when the mind is still, then you can see things for what they really are. If you're moving around a lot, you, everything is a blur. Sometimes it gets so blurry you can't tell right from wrong. But when the mind is still, it can sort things out. You can see anger arising, you can see greed arising, and you don't have to go along with it. You see them as separate things. The mind, your awareness in one place with the breath and the movement of the greed or the anger or the delusion, you can see it as it's moving. And you realize you don't have to get involved, because you get involved with these things if you identify them and take them on as being you or yours. Then it's going to lead to trouble. The thing is that they have their their flavor. There's the flavor of greed. We like it. We like the flavor of anger. We like the flavor of delusion. This is why the Buddha says you've got to give the mind something better to feed on, which is why you try to make it still. Because it's not just the stillness here. There's a sense of strength that comes from being still, and a sense of well-being that comes from being still. And that can be food for the mind. When the mind is well-fed and it's strong, then it can look at other things and say, okay, that's food, and it's delicious food, but I know it's bad for me. I don't have to go there. That's the way you begin to sort things out inside. But in order to sort them out, first you have to get as still as possible. Keep the mind with the breath right wherever you feel the breath coming in going out. Just stay right there. Let your awareness spread so it feels comfortable in the body, but keep it still, still, still. Because it's only through stillness that you can see what's really going on. It's only through stillness that you can get the strength to know what you're doing and know how to do it right. What should be done knowing how to do it right. So give the mind the strength it needs, because the strength of the body lasts only for a short while. It doesn't take too many years before you find that the things you used to be able to do you can't do anymore. And the body didn't ask your permission, it didn't give you any news ahead of time that it was going to stop doing these things. All of a sudden you find that you used to be able to run, you used to be able to walk, you can't run and walk anymore. And bit by bit by bit it all shuts down. But the mind doesn't have to be that way. All too often if we identify with the body and the body gets old, the mind starts getting old too. It thinks like an old person and can't do this, can't do that. But if the mind maintains its strength and knows a separate way of maintaining its strength, then it can stay strong and it can stay clear. Even as the body begins to wear down, the mind can still be clear, can still be strong inside. And that's the kind of strength that really matters. <laughs>